to those who work in remote places like forest rangers, oil rig workers, etc. What creepy things have you noticed while at work? I work on North Sea oil rigs off the coast of Scotland. Wouldn't say anything was particularly paranormal creepy, but it can be very unsettling, weird place. Fog can come rolling in out of nowhere, and other rigs you can see off the sides can disappear in front of your eyes. Sometimes you can't see the walkways sixth in front of you, or if you're walking over grading you can't see the sea below your feet, about 60 meters down from deck to sea, but you can hear it, albeit muffled. The fog can roll in over the course of a few minutes too, so a perfectly clear day becomes pea soup. You can also feel the rig moving, swaying on high winds, rough seas, even though it's a fixed leg platform. Very unnerving to feel your office swaying when it shouldn't be. My last trip was my first ever night shift, and I found it particularly unsettling as you've got the background noise of the plant. But I walked around the whole rig without seeing another living soul for the whole shift. Usually there are about 130 people on board, although smaller rigs have smaller headcounts. Usually once a trip am hit by this awareness that you are just very isolated and in the middle of nowhere. Most rigs I've worked on are an hour's chopper ride from land. So if things go wrong, it can escalate very quickly. Story two, during college that was located away from major cities, the woods were all around us. That being said, there was a highly rated trail, the Loyal Sock Trail, which was about an hour drive from the university. I invited a friend to come with me as he had never been on an extended backpacking trip, a 50 plus mile trail that we intended to backpack over the four day weekend. I am an Eagle Scout who has spent countless hours in the woods and went on backpacking trips consistently throughout my college experience. As many have said before me, you get used to the minor, spooky things happening. Coyote howls, raccoons in the middle of the night, even the occasional unknown noise. The scariest thing to find in the woods, however, are people. We were about 20 miles into the trail and, being Pennsylvania where the underbrush and trees line the trails pretty densely, I always walk about 100 meters off of the trail to reduce the chances of me disturbing people, people disturbing me, especially in the early morning when I choose to sleep in. Following that same strategy, my friend and I go out of our way to be in this amazing spot, a good ways off of the trail where it would even be difficult to see our flashlights from the trail. This spot was on a peninsula where a creek met a river, meaning there was only one way into our camp and only one way out. We start a fire, cook our food, and drink some, but not enough to get either of us drunk. We put the fire out about midnight and head into our individual tents. All is quiet. It is the fall semester, so leaves are on the ground, the moon is brightly shining through the bare trees, and the air is cool. The only noise is the occasional time when I would hear my friend turn over in his sleep. Then I hear the voices. The voices sounded very close for being on the trail 100 plus meters away. I check my watch, 3 a.m. Who hikes at 3 a.m.? We are 20 miles in. I slowly get out of my sleeping bag, slowly unzip my tent, only to see my friend peeking out of his tent in the exact same fashion. He quickly moves his finger over his mouth in an exaggerated hush signal, then use the same hand to frantically motion towards the way of the trail. Then we see them, four adults, three men, and one woman, walking directly towards our camp. No lights illuminating their path. They are walking silently at this point. Only one of them has a backpack, an impossibility for the long hike they were one-three of the way through. Being a long trip, you bring wood-cutting supplies to chop branches into smaller branches to burn. For me, this was a survival knife. Grabbing the knife, believing it is my only way of defending myself, I am more disheveled than I ever have been, especially knowing that a knife is barely defense at all. These people walk into our sight, sit down by our extinguished fire pit, and just sit there for what felt like an eternity. My friend speaks up and asks what they are doing in our campsite. Without answering the question, they ask if we have any food, having packed it as lightly as possible for the long trip. We had only a few extra mountain house, MRE-style meals. I grab one out of my bag and toss it to one of the men. In rapid succession, I ask why they aren't using a light, if they need help finding the trail, and why they are hiking so late. They respond with the following. We don't use lights. We know where the trail is. It is better to hike late at night. Unnerved at this point, my friend asks them to leave. They respond by asking if we want to light the fire and hang out for a bit. No, we do not. They grab their bag, get up, and leave without speaking another word. We watch them leave and take shifts making sure that they didn't come back. Needless to say, we both got very little sleep that night. When the sun rose the next morning, we finally got real sleep. By the afternoon, when we woke up, 
It all felt like a weird dream of sorts. The only evidence was a fuzzy cap that they must have dropped that I have to this day. Story 3, on our drill ship that was built in China, we noticed on the drawings there was a room. We went to look at it and couldn't find an entrance, but the spacing was obvious, there was an extra room. It might not sound so creepy unless you've been in these shipyards where two things are known to happen. Stowaways. Although I doubt it in this case, but also hundreds of workers at any given time following orders blindly. So we confirmed that the room had all six sides, yet not a single weld on the outside. There is only one way this could have happened, and I'm sure you're starting to get it now. They must have welded from the inside for this room, and then realized they had no way out upon completion if the gases didn't kill them first. It's extremely heavy around that room. People say they hear things. I have definitely. This isn't some old ship either. I rode this ship from China to Amsterdam after completion and then the maiden voyage to America. I guess it happens quick. Story 4. We were wrapping up for the day in northern Canada. I am fueling up the side boom. I am all by myself at this point because I was tired of listening to the laborers whine of the cold, so I told him I would take care of the rest. Think bulldozer with no blade but a giant metal boom on the side that we use to razor and lower pipe. It's February so pitch black, I keep hearing some weird sound. I can't quite hear it cause the pump is too loud. I search around a couple times and see nothing. I get in the truck and take off drive past the front of the side boom to see a cougar sitting on top of a dirt pile 15 feet away. The damn thing was just watching me there and probably could have ended me without me even realizing it. I've never seen a cougar in the wild before, and it's hard to understand just how big they are and how powerful until you see one up close. That thing leaped off the 6F pile and probably didn't touch ground for 15 20 f It's terrifying to think something so big and powerful could just be sitting there deciding if they want to make you dinner. Story 5. I worked as the county historic preservationist in southern Appalachia, working on the buildings and properties the county owned. One of the benefits included with my job was living on site at one of the historic properties. The historic house was an imposing brick mansion built in the 1810s, and I lived in a small caretaker's house about 20 feet away. This was in the backwoods, so to deter trespassing and vandalism, the county had built an eight-foot-tall fence around the entire five-acre parcel and put barbed wire on top of the fence. I mention this all just to show it was basically impossible for anyone, or anything, to jump or climb over the fencing and onto the property. One night, after working late at another property, I pulled up to my entrance gate, let myself in, locked it behind me, and then drove the 100 yards down the gravel road to my house. There were no lights on the property, so I could only see by my headlights. As I turned my car around the corner of one of the outbuildings and parked it, my lights shone on a thing that I still have a hard time describing effectively. It was the size of a deer, but with long spindly legs and long shaggy hair almost like a taller maned wolf, if you've ever seen pictures of one of those. That alone shook me as there was no way something of that size should have been able to get through or over my fencing. What follows is absolutely true. I got out of my car to get a better look at what the hell the thing was, and as I opened the door and got out, the thing took off running away. Not on four legs, but on two. I literally watched this thing raise its back up, stand at full height on its back legs, and sprint away. I absolutely freaked out at that point, grabbed my mag light and my shotgun from inside and tried to find the thing again. There was no trace. No tracks or anything. I have no idea how it got an oar out of my property. I didn't sleep at all that night, just sat on my couch with my shotgun watching my front door, hoping that whatever I saw didn't come back and burst in. I cannot explain what the hell I saw that night, but it still raises the hair on my neck every time I think about it. Story 6 I've worked in Canada's north for a few years now in oil and gas. It's pretty creepy when during night shift you realize a moose has just been standing at the tree line staring you down for an unknown length of time, or finding bear tracks crossing the tracks you just made five minutes ago. Honestly, the silence of a snowy forest in the dead of night 100s of kilometers away from anything is pretty spooky. When your only contact to the outside world is a radio channel nobody's listening to, you feel pretty alone.